Hey everyone, Brandon Lee here with Virtualization How To. And if you're using Docker in your environment, and you should be, one thing you're probably always on top of is keeping your container images updated. Today I'm going to walk you through five awesome tools for updating Docker images on both standalone Docker hosts as well as Docker Swarm clusters, making sure you're up to date with minimal effort. We will see how to use the lightweight nature of container images to our advantage with some really cool automation. So let's dive first up on the list is using the built-in docker cli commands now this is the manual process to update your container images but it's straightforward and it gets the job done Plus, it helps you to learn the background steps and processes that take place with the automated solutions so you can learn Docker a bit better. Basically, we'll start by pulling the latest image, stopping the container, removing it, and then running the new image. So let's take a look at how this process works. Okay, so the first thing I'm doing is I'm issuing a Docker PS command just to see the running containers so we know which containers we need to update. Now I'm looking at the Docker images that I have on this particular host. And as you can see, they were created four weeks ago and we can see their repository as well as the tags. So now we're going to issue a Docker pull container agent latest tag as this is one of the container images that I want to make sure is updated. So once we do that, we'll start to see the container image pulled down. And this is the latest container image. Now what we need to do to instantiate this container image is we need to stop the current container agent image. And then also we're going to remove that particular container. So now we can see we've got the latest image and we've got it tagged as such. We can see when it was created 12 days ago, which is indeed newer, that was four weeks ago. So now we see we've got the latest image. So what we need to do is simply restart our portainer agent with the same parameters using that tagged image. And that's what we did. Now we have a brand new portainer agent container running on the latest image. Next up is one of my favorites. We have Watchtower. Watchtower is an amazing tool for standalone Docker hosts, and it does a lot of the manual work for you. Basically, you set it up to check for new images periodically, and it will pull and restart containers with the updated images based on the same settings that you used originally, which that is fantastic. Watch Hour even has customizable scheduling options so that you can set it to check for updates every day at a specific time. You can also configure it to send notifications and let you know which images it found to be updated. And there are other features of this tool. It is a really convenient tool if you want to have a set it and forget it method to keep your container images up to date on standalone Docker hosts. So let's take a look at basic Watch Hour configuration for updating our Docker containers. So I have the Docker Compose code for Watchtower displayed. As you can see, nothing out of the ordinary here. We just got the container name, the restart policy, but the environment variables are where the magic actually happens. First off, you're gonna see the Watchtower schedule, and that is a very important bit of configuration. When do you want it to run? This is showing 1 a.m., which is when I have it check and repull. Here you also see the notifications that I have configured, which are just standard email notifications, but I am using my really cool MailRise server. If you want to know how to set that up, I've got a video on that that will walk you through. But the environment variables are where you set all of these things up, such as this, that schedule, your notifications, and how you want Watchtower to clean up images, and many other types of configuration that I want to show you on their official documentation site. And one thing I want to recommend to you guys is the official documentation for Watchtower. They've got some really good usage sample snippets of code. Uh, so you can go here if the example that I have shown does not really fit your use case and you're looking for some other configuration parameters, you can most certainly find that here on the official documentation for Watchtower. And the arguments page is really good too because it has a lot of different configurations, time zones, how you want to clean up your old container images, uh, if you want to access a custom repository, notifications, if you're looking for a specific notification configuration outside of what I have shown in my code snippet, 
You can also edit the template of how it looks when it sends those notifications, what those notifications look like. Uh, as you can see, you've got legacy notifications, you've got modern notification configuration examples. So a lot of really good information there. Now, if you're using Docker Swarm, and if you're wondering how you can do that, check out my video that I did recently on that topic. Watchtower may not be the best option in Swarm as it is built for standalone hosts. For Swarm clusters, we have a tool called Shepherd. This tool is designed specifically for Docker Swarm clusters, and it works very similarly to Watchtower, but it's built to handle Swarm's unique requirements and updating the Swarm services, which you don't have in standalone Docker hosts. With Shepherd, you get the same kind of automation but it's tailored once again for Swarm. And it makes it perfect for larger multi-node clusters that you're running that you need to keep the container images updated on. Let me show you guys my configuration with Shepard on my Docker Swarm cluster and how it keeps my Swarm environment updated. So here I'm in Portainer, I'm clicking on the Shepard stack that I've created. And I wanna run you guys through this Docker Compose code. We've got the Shepard image, we've got our time zone, and this one uniquely runs once. So when the cron job fires off, it will run this container once. Deploy stanza, this is just standard Docker Swarm stuff. We've got a restart policy. We've got the label that's important, which schedules when this cron job fires off and runs that container once. The scheduler is running this crazy max swarm cron job image. Then it will trigger Shepard that will then loop through all of your containers, container images, and pull the latest image and then properly restart those Docker Swarm services. Portainer is next up on our list. This is a multi-use tool that is fantastic. I think you should check it out as of yesterday. This one's a bit more versatile because it can handle manual updates, but also offers webhooks for the automation that we all know and love. You could use Portainer's recreate feature to update images manually if you just want to see which images you have that need to be updated and use that recreate option. You can simply toggle the repool image to make sure that you get the latest version when you recreate the container. Now, as for automation, you can enable container webhooks in Portainer. Portainer generates a webhook URL that you can use to trigger updates remotely, which adds a lot of flexibility. You can trigger this tool in the CI CD pipeline or using another means. Portainer is ideal if you like a blend of manual control, a doc Docker dashboard, a UI for your Docker environment, as well as these really cool update features. Let me give you guys a walkthrough of how you can do these updates in Portainer. So we're in Portainer. I've clicked on the containers menu and I love how it gives you a visual indication of out of date images. The amber circle with the X in the middle, you can click it to make sure that it is still indeed out of date. Then if we click the container name where we see the out of date image, you'll note that there is a recreate button. Now this recreate button is powerful. When you click it, you not only get the option to recreate the container, but you can toggle this repull image. So what this will do is when it recreates a container, it will check to see if there's a newer image available. So extremely powerful. When that container spins back up, as you see here, we've got the starting state we can already see that under the image column, we've got an up-to-date container. We've got the green circle with a check mark. So now the container is fully up-to-date and running. Now for automation, I'm connected to another container host. If I click the containers menu, and I'm just gonna click this fresh RSS container. Now you'll notice the container webhook toggle. This is only available in the business edition. However, I'll say this, that you can get three nodes for free if you're operating in a home lab environment or a student home user wanting to learn the product. Now, as you can see, when you toggle that, you will see the webhook URL generated. And this is the URL that you will use in something like Postman or a CI CD pipeline where you can post to that URL and trigger that recreate slash update. Last but not least, let's talk about CI CD pipelines. If you're already running CI CD, you have another great way to trigger updates automatically. For instance, you can use a GitLab CI CD pipeline with a webhook URL from Portainer to kick off updates 
of your container images. Beyond updating images, you can also automate cleanups. And this is one of the things that I have really found useful in the home lab. If you're updating your container images very often, then you're going to get a lot of old container images dangling volumes after each update. And using CICD, you can take full control over your Docker environment with the automated approach for that cleanup. Let me show you guys my CICD pipeline for performing these Docker cleanups using the Docker system prune command, which I have automated. So here I've logged into my GitLab environment. And as you can see, I've got the Docker dash prune project. And this is the project that I'm using to hold all of my code and run the CICD pipeline. I'm going to just walk you guys through the GitLab pipeline file just so you can see what I've got going on in the logic I'm using. It's got two steps. In this first step, we are simply fetching the VM names. These are Linux boxes that I'm grabbing out of vSphere inventory and putting into this VM underscore names.txt file. The second step is running the script. And you're going to see the SSH logic that I have. I've got a GitLab variable that holds the SSH private key. And what it does is it uses that private key, pulls it from the variable, loops through all of the servers so that it can connect. And then you're actually going to see the command that is running here, docker system prune dash a dash f dash dash volumes. And it captures the information amount of space that it is able to save. And then it emails that information to me through my SMTP server. So I'm going to go back over to my pipelines view so you guys can see how I've got that set up. It simply calls that pipeline file that we just looked at. I was making some changes this morning, as you can see the failures. Uh, so I've got that back working and I've literally just got this scheduled every evening. And I run this in conjunction with my Shepard cron script. This prune script actually runs after those updates happen so that I'm cleaning up all of those dangling images, containers, any of those types of things to reclaim that that space and keep things working really efficiently. And there you have it, five great ways to keep your Docker images updated from basic CLI commands to full automation with CI/CD. Each tool has its strengths, so you can pick which works best for your setup. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please do give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and leave a comment below to let me know what you use to keep your Docker images updated if it's not one of the tools found in our list. Please do stay safe out there, keep on home labbing, and I will see you in the next video.